Manchester United engage in a ball draw against Chelsea at home and the United Twins need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Yep. Manchester United won, Chelsea won, and the best way I could sum everything up is by saying the overall product lacked quality. Neither side in the final third consistently showcased their attacking talents when you consider who was on the pitch. We had our spells where in the first half, uh, we created tentative moments. Rashford skipping past Mano Gusto, I think it was, and getting the cross in. Uh, he also had a chance at the very end of the half to give United the lead. And to be fair, his technique looked really good as Bruno switched the ball towards the back post and Marcus tries to timidly guide the ball in. Clips the crossbar and that was half time basically. Alejandro Garnacho was a part of some of our best transitional opportunities but his execution today was extremely erratic. Mm. He was caught offside on a few occasions, missed passing windows, poor finishing. There was a moment in the second half which epitomized his day on the counter. Bruno pulls the ball back to him. It was a good piece of movement initially inside the area, but as he prepares to shoot, kicks the ball off his left boot and scuffs it completely. There was a lot of discourse and probably still is a lot of discourse about his performance in particular. And often these conversations turn into an I'm on this side and you're on that side type of argument when it just doesn't need to be that way. I don't think it benefits players like Garnacho who are clearly established first teamers at this moment, albeit at a young age. Sometimes players need that straightforward constructive criticism and to be taken away from constantly being safeguarded. These are the crucial development years where they need to make mistakes, but only if they understand and grow from such things, improve their overall game. That ultimately is on him, coaches and the environment, and I'm sure there are other factors too. The problem is when those mistakes start reoccurring and years go by and suddenly you're still waiting for the emergence of that top player you once image to pop out of thin air. That's my mini rant. That is my mini rant, however. And I just think sometimes as a fan base, balance breeds logical outcomes that actually help us all to move forward instead of remaining stagnant. Ask questions, find answers. You know, CM, a lot of people will focus on our attacking shortcomings, rightly so, but I still have major concerns about how we cannot control fixtures for sustained periods of time. Valid. Manchester United look extremely vulnerable after turning over possession of the ball, and we all know we don't exactly retain possession very well. Or perhaps it's not just that. Maybe an even bigger part of why our vulnerabilities come to show is because of of the shape adopted in and out of possession. For example, numerous times in the first half, I saw our team struggling to play out when Chelsea pressed high because there weren't enough players close to the receiver. It may have their back to goal, which makes the task slightly more difficult if you have less time to think. But even in an opposite scenario, guys settled for low percentage passes, which presented Chelsea with possession or forced one of our forwards to engage in a physical aerial duel and, and that within itself doesn't play to any of their strengths. Ruben Amarim has an extreme job on his hands when it comes to creating a team that can consistency, consistently remain compact and on the same wavelength again in and out of possession. Something that I feel will play a part in making us a better pressing side tougher to play through as a result of that and many more elements in possession which I expect to change after listening to how Amarim currently displays his sporting team. Everything is subject to change of course depending on personnel and as we know the players that we currently have in this team may cause problems for any coach to adapt to especially in the Premier League so we'll just have to 
wait and see how things transpire over time. Away from the chances we didn't take, the first goal of the game came through Bruno Fernandes' patented penalty technique, sending Robert Sanchez the wrong way. But prior to this, Casemiro's pass was exceptional to pick out Rasmus Hoyland, who actually touched the ball for a first and second time in Chelsea's area. Two important touches, may I have you? A bit even though celebrations were short-lived, there's Moises Caicedo, who I felt had a really good performance. The man in the match, I believe, in the middle of the park for Chelsea, ruthlessly volleyed home Casemiro's half-clearance from a corner kick, which fell to the Ecuadorian at the edge of the area. Two quality goals in terms of build-up and execution, respectively. Um, we were lucky uh, to not fall behind afterwards, too. It was a rocky period after conceding, lacked composure and had to survive at home, which has become more of a norm, regardless of the location for Manchester United. Luckily, things did calm down. Neither side, again, did, neither side did act on their intentions to win and that resulted in an underwhelming draw from an entertainment or performative standpoint. Fair result nonetheless. Now, we all know about our struggles in Europe so far this season, beyond this season. Uh, at home, this time around, we'll be facing off against the Greek champions, Pauk. Uh, much like us, they're winless in the Europa League after three fixtures, but they've been defeated twice against Galatasaray and Romanian side Stal Bucuresti. So, here's an opportunity to finally get our first victory at Old Trafford before the or before our final fixture before the international break rekindling with Leicester City back to back home games and and ones that Ruud van Nistelrooy will be hoping to sign off on a positive note with at least from an interim standpoint and we don't know as of yet if he will stay on as an assistant you know, from his words he is determined or, or maybe committed is the right way to put it mm. committed to staying at the club we also know that Amarim is bringing his entire coaching setup, I believe, so I'm sure we'll get a definitive answer sooner rather than later. Let us know in the comments how you felt about United's draw against Chelsea the week ahead with games against Powell and Leicester. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, share to your friends and frenemies, and until the next time, we'll see you lot sooner!